So we need spiritual knowledge. How do we get the spiritual knowledge? In our Vedic tradition, the Vedas have a paramount place beyond compare. Sarvan Vedat Prasidhyati. The validity of any spiritual principle has to be established on the authority of the Vedas. If the Vedas are saying this is correct, it is correct. If the Vedas are not validating it, there is reason to disbelieve. So the Vedas have the foremost place in our Sanatan Dharma, what we call the Hindu religion. And to explain that Vedic knowledge, we've got a whole lot of scriptures, which are collectively called the Vedic scriptures. These include the two Itihas, historical texts, Ramayana and Mahabharata, the Shad Darshan, the six philosophic treaties written by six rishis, Mimansa, Vedan, Nyaya, Vaisheshik, Sankhya, Yoga, the Ashtadash, 18 Puranas, the hundred Smriti Shastras, thousands of Nibans, to just mention just a few. All this is called the Vedic literature. Now, in order to understand this Vedic literature, to merely read it would require 500 years. And if it took us 500 years to get the theoretical knowledge right, how would we ever practice it? So we need knowledge quickly. To reach this Vedic knowledge are three starting points called the Prasthantrai, which have been highly emphasized by all the great Acharyas. And they have written their commentaries on these. The first is the Brahma Sutra, the Vedant Darshan. The second is the Ekadash Upanishad, 11 of the important Upanishads. And the third is the Bhagavad Gita. Now, amongst these, the Brahma Sutra is exceedingly difficult to comprehend. It's deep philosophy. And the Upanishads too are not within the grasp of an ordinary person. The Bhagavad Gita is more approachable. Firstly, it is simple and easy to understand. Secondly, it gives a comprehensive view of the whole Vedic philosophy. That is why it is respected as much as the Upanishads and it is also called the Gita Upanishad. Lord Krishna, he says, Sarvo Upanishadoga vo dogdha gopalanandana Arjun, these Upanishads are like the calm dhenu, wish-fulfilling tau. And me, Sri Krishna, I am the Gopal who has milked this Upanishads and I am presenting you this knowledge in the form of the Bhagavad Gita. So the Bhagavad Gita has been exceedingly popular through the millennia. And the great Acharyas wrote their commentaries on it. Shankaracharya, Madhvacharya, etc. And then in the previous century, the leaders of our freedom struggle, starting from Bal, Gangadhar, Tilak, Mahatma Gandhi, they all declared that the source of their inspiration was the Bhagavad Gita. So it became even more popular. And they impacted the giants in the West, like Nelson Mandela and Martin Luther King Jr., etc. So the Bhagavad Gita became even more popular. And in the 1960s, the gurus who started coming from India to the West, they also kept the Bhagavad Gita as their important text. So this Bhagavad Gita has now got worldwide popularity. But our respect for it 
is not merely because of its popularity. We respect it because it contains infallible knowledge. Infallible knowledge is not that which is derived from the senses. The senses could deceive us. Infallible knowledge comes from the descending process. When the source is perfect and you receive knowledge from that source, there is no scope for doubt. The perfect source is God himself. He cannot make mistakes. And God has given this knowledge to us. Supreme Lord spoke it to Arjun. So that is why the source is perfect. We can with our eyes closed accept this knowledge. Mm -hmm.